Hello again, I'm Jake. And I'm Allie. And welcome back to the Movie Buff Reactions channel. Today we're going to be reacting to the Cinema Snobs 2015 review of Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. And for those of the Cinema Snob fan base, you will know this one pretty well. For those who don't, Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas was a religious uh, holiday movie that came out in 2014. It was marketed as a um, movie that kind of brought back family values, <laughs> but felt more like a crazy PSA to spew the most insane fucking ideas about Christmas you've ever heard. Kirk Cameron, um, he's an interesting character, former child star, become evangelical minister, and he's a good example of why uh, you should probably not let the Jesus into your life. Nobody fucks with the Jesus. How much you think a cross like that costs? You mean in dollars or common sense? Have you ever heard of this movie? I have never heard of this movie. You ever heard of Kirk Cameron? Vaguely. Well, you're in for a treat. This is the Cinema Snob's first year that he wore the signature onesies for the holiday season. A classic. Something that he, it's become regular every year, but he switches it up here and there. So without further rambling, let's watch. What the hell am I spotlighting this movie for? This movie came out way past 1995. Don't worry, there's a perfectly logical explanation as to why I'm spotlighting Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. It's because between movies <laughs> like Saving Christmas, God's Not Dead, and War Room, we are now living in a golden age of a different kind of exploitation film. One that thoroughly 2014 was the year that the, the Christian cinema really kicked off. Uh, and two <laughs> more people talking about it in a car. And two more people. Brad Show uh, Midnight Screenings. A lot of people have talked about Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. Eh, it's my show. I can talk about whatever the hell I want. Oh, man, I got just a track for you. How about some Family Force 5? Angels, we have heard oh high. <laughs> Come on, people, let's do this. Oh boy. I want to see a choir in here. Uh, God Squad, you know how we do. It's been <laughs> one year since the release of Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. And in that time, the movie has gone on to become the room of Christmas movies. Or the birdemic of Christmas movies. Or insert notoriously bad movie here of Christmas movies. <laughs> How bad is it? In theaters, the movie was known as Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas. <laughs> Can but now, can. <laughs> it's just Saving Christmas with Kirk Cameron's name over it. He has completely given up ownership of Saving Christmas after Ernest rightfully <laughs> was taking that claim. Classic. But surely there's got to be some critics that liked it. Zero percent rotten tomatoes. <laughs> oh my god, I've never no, seen that. There. <laughs> okay, let's find some crazy people. A wonderful defense of Christmas traditions, says Dr. Ben Carson. <laughs> and that's only the twelfth craziest thing he said. Really, that's the choice on the other side? A guy who liked saving Christmas versus a guy who was in Ghosts Can't Do It? <laughs> According to the Dove Foundation, Saving Christmas is the perfect movie for the Christmas Reviewer season. Reviewer of Christian films. Right. So now we're getting bars of soap to review movies? How can I trust their taste <laughs> when they're so used to cleaning out assholes? <laughs> but the best is Phil Robertson, who says it will change the way you think. <laughs> Uh, so is that why your kids aren't yuppies anymore? In Kirk Cameron's Save Duck Christmas, Kirk uh -huh. Cameron does indeed save Christmas by talking to his grumpy brother-in-law in the car for half the movie while linking various Christmas icons to the Bible in the same way a psychopath links Stanley Kubrick's The Shining to Indian Genocide. What the hell company put this out? Samuel Goldwyn? You put out Master and Commander, and Super Size Me, and the Squid and the Whale. Much Next better titles. Kind of thing from Liberty University. After all, they've been training champions <coughs> in Christ since 1971. See, Before that, they were all heathens. <laughs> they were so baked, they wanted walking on water to be a college sport. <laughs> now here's something we're going to see a lot of. 
Kirk Cameron explaining the point of the movie. Welcome, everyone. I am so glad you're here. Good. <laughs> He's straight. <laughs> I love the cookies. I love the fire. I, I love Is the this presents. the movie? I love the Yes. Stuff. I love the tree. I love the fudge. You also <laughs> clearly love baked sets because that's what you're sitting on. After growing pains, do you just live on a soundstage? There's something that makes people want to be more kind. At Christmas, they want to be more compassionate. Very true. Hey, Kirk, tell us your feelings on gay marriage. <laughs> or continue talking about random objects you want to have sex with. <laughs> and I love hot chocolate. Yeah, those eyes. <laughs> then perhaps you should pour some in that obviously empty cup. But then Kirk begins to talk about the people trying to take Christmas away from him. Probably his family members, because all of these lights keep running up the electric bill. There's this one group over here that says, Hey, if you want to sing your songs and do your stuff at Christmas time, that's fine, but tone it down. Don't sing so loud. To be fair, it's six o'clock in the goddamn morning. <laughs> who are the other people who hate Christmas? <clears throat> Everything you're doing, all this stuff, the images, the, the characters, the traditions, it's all wrong. It has nothing to do with Christmas. So why do you have it up? Yeah. If taking a ball of snow and throwing it in your sleeping cousin's face doesn't signify the birth of the baby Jesus, <laughs> then I don't know what does, except hot chocolate. <laughs> you know, what are they going to do next? Tell us hot chocolate's bad for us? The, the, the druids invented it? That's such an empty cup. First, <laughs> yeah. So like you said. This is a cup of coffee. Let me say that, and then you should thank the Aztecs. Seriously, hmm. is there a point in all of this? Or maybe we're listening to the wrong people. How can that be? Yeah, the you. Movie that's recommended to me by the guy who equated homosexuality with bestiality. He so did that. Show up Phil Robertson. People. Sorry, I'm just so used to Killer Santas being on this show. Just maybe. Someone like Santa Claus is actually on the team? What team is that? Team empty cups of cocoa? What do you leave out for him? Plastic cookies and an empty glass of milk? You gotta love when a movie's production logo comes in after the movie has started. What? They always say if you have to explain your art to somebody. And with sound effects from a saw movie. What the hell kind of family film is this? It's one that starts out with a long haired caveman who looks like every burnt out projectionist cutting together a film of Saving Christmas. And I'm pretty sure that's the Krampus lingering around outside. There was a time when we didn't mind hearing the same stories over and over it again. Is. And then Platinum Dunes came around and started remaking shit that we love. Nothing like Shit. her once again telling us why this movie was made. You and I are in a story right now. <laughs> and how we enter this story matters. So make sure you enter this story good and baked. <laughs> Just when I'm once again wondering what the point is, the opening credit sequence starts up, which makes me wonder, is this what? movie ever gonna start? This is a nice animated opening. Too bad I can't see most of it because the credit font is so fucking huge. <clears throat> Edited by Post Mill Factory? What the hell is that? Is that the editing equivalent of AAV Creative Unit writing most of Godfrey Poe's <laughs> movies? Given that Kirk Cameron Too is ashamed to have their name. neither yeah. writer nor director, shouldn't it be Darren Jones saving Christmas since he does direct, co-write, and co-star in the film? You know how Adam Sandler uses movies to score a free vacation? I think Kirk uses movies as an excuse to throw a house party. Hey everybody, that's me, enjoying the party. I know, you've introduced yourself twice now, and your name is part of the title. <laughs> One of his sisters is in this, which I guess means Candace Cameron was too good for this movie. <laughs> no one loves a Christmas party more than her. Yeah, you I can can't tell. tell. Face that says, "Will everyone please use a goddamn coaster?" That's the face of someone who's had a rough life. Yeah. Where'd you find him? Where'd you get the baby guy? Oh my God. It's Uncle Bill. Uncle Bill must.
must stay a thousand yards away from school playgrounds. Uncle Bill is a <laughs> terrible party, especially when everyone isn't nearly as jolly as Kirk. Do I need to break some lights? Is that fitting you right? No. Because I'll, I'll take it on the back right now. I'd like to see a try. How very Christian of you. But when a family member is sad, the important thing comes first. All right, who wants hot chocolate? You already yeah. drank oh, all the hot enough chocolate. Enough with the goddamn hot chocolate. This close to eating the empty cups. The sad sack at the party is Kirk's brother-in-law, Christian White. Yes. <laughs> the character's name is Christian White. White <laughs> goes right along with Kirk's character's name. Bad former teen star. Mm. Christian looks depressed, probably because he's played by director Darren Doan, who's thinking, I used to direct Blink 182 videos. He what did. Really? Life. Yeah. And Kirk is here to tell us what his real problem is. You just don't know someone's story until you see what's going on inside his head. Look. What? So Christian is about to murder a bunch of children? Yeah. He could just be annoyed by certain party guests. Say the same fun filled with the Holy Ghost and that with a burning fire. And? May that mean by speaking in tongues? Of course. <laughs> well, so this is what Kirk Cameron thinks black people are, huh? Mm -hmm. We don't have crazy shirt Fridays. It's the end for us. That's all we got. What else do we get? Floor two? I don't want floor two. You know what happens on the floor two? I don't. Don't want to find out, because I'm on floor four, and I like it that way. We're going to keep it that way. We're going to march if we have to. Straight power. What <laughs> the fuck? Did he just say straight power? Anyone who ever uses the term straight power is most certainly not straight. You might as well just walk in and say, hello, I'm Kirk Cameron. <laughs> oh, God, he's still going. Crazy shirt Fridays. Do you know how many crazy shirts I've got that my wife gave me for Christmas? What am I going to do with those? Eventually, his audio just cuts out and the music plays over him rambling like a jackass. Did you seriously put him Black in Black guy just on 10 cups of coffee. Oh. I think I'd want to get the hell out of there, too. And if that person goes missing from the Christmas party, especially if it's at his own home, a good place to look would be somewhere quiet. Why does he have to narrate this entire yeah, about movie? That. Because he thinks everybody uh, needs to be spoon-fed the message, whatever that is. I'm driving by a store and I, and I see, I see a little girl and her mom. A little girl got this look on her face. Like, okay, Christian, seriously, did you just shoot up a shopping mall? And now the first person in the movie to have a point about something. How many kids could we have fed? How many wells we have dug? Yeah. That's Christmas. Mm, good point. I sure hope Kirk has an answer here. I hear you. I get my money. Yeah. That's the most uncomfortable okay. fist bump ever. This yeah. movie was short, but I didn't think it was this short. You're all wrong. He's Kirk Cameron. Of course, he's the one who's right about everything. About what? About everything you just said. Hey, wait, how can he be wrong? What about what you said earlier? Something that makes people bring others in from out of the cold and help them, clothe them, feed them. My mistake. I didn't realize you were just talking about being kind to yourself. Commercial break spot. Now let's make Christian feel bad for wanting to be a Christian. You 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 drank the Kool-Aid. This is coming from a guy mm. who once made a movie where he compared his troubled marriage to Jesus dying on the cross. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I'm being a Christmas grumpus. Perhaps I should let the man speak. Let's start with your stumble. Thank you, because all Christian morality tales begin with the phrase, let's start with the snow globe. <laughs> Continue. If you had to pick one valuable thing in all of the decorations around your house at Christmas time, it would probably be your nativity set. Right, close. For me, it's a green ball I made in kindergarten. But saving Christmas isn't just about saving Christmas. It's about saving history. This was a child <clears throat> that was born into a world where the world power wanted to kill him just for being born. Uh, King Herod's Massacre of the Innocents. 
It's that thing that's never referenced anywhere outside the Bible. And then it gets dark. You need to think of Herod's soldiers moving through the streets, finding babies and murdering them. What is Hell, you don't even need to think about it when we can just show you. What was that other thing Kirk said earlier? We thought that maybe the stories were a bit too scary. We got nervous that the wolf or the witch might actually give them nightmares. All right, so here's a much more uplifting story of baby killing. Merry fucking <laughs> Christmas. For the family. The <laughs> soldiers should have been looking for the whitest family in Bethlehem. Joseph is there, surely amazed. And gullible as fuck. That's <laughs> Joseph. Might as well, what does he have to do with the story? In fact, the rest start disappearing too, as if Marty McFly really fucked <laughs> shit up. <laughs> even take away the baby himself for just a moment. Now don't panic. Oh, phew. Oh, I was really starting to panic. Good thing you didn't already show a bunch of babies getting killed. Don't worry, I'm sure this will all make sense. Swaddling cloth. What is this swaddling cloth? I don't know, Kirk. What is this swaddling cloth? But the Bible brings these cloths back into the story one more time. At his tomb. He also probably shit himself at birth and at <laughs> death, too. So do I need to start worshipping the toilet? <laughs> and it'll make sense once he brings the wine. An interesting thing to worship. Why do they bring burial spices to a baby shower? The birth scene is a picture of a coming burial scene. That's right, the wise men brought burial items to remind Jesus' mother that her son is going to die horribly. <laughs> These men aren't wise, they're assholes. So that's the true meaning of Most Christmas. Most wise people Blankets. are. Yeah. I gotta admit, I never saw the whole swaddling cloth. Nobody did. Nobody saw the swaddling cloth. I never even thought of it until this movie. Just put yeah. child killing soldiers around the nativity. I feel like we need to have like little Herod soldiers like all around. You know, the nativity right. for, for people to see like right. this is this is what's going on, right? Right. right. I was fucking kidding. That's <laughs> what you want to do to make this party more Christian? Put up displays of baby side? Oh good, I was worried we wouldn't this see scene. this guy. And what's with the cat whisper? Who invited him to the party? Cat whisper, cat whisper. Uh, why can't I remember that guy's name? This guy, remember his name is Jackson Galaxy? <laughs> of course it is! <laughs> Alright, thanks, review number three. Uh, what now? Is he gonna compare Take Your Child to Work Day to the Selma of Montgomery? The black guy's about to get pretty quiet for once. War on Christmas. Here we go. Cuts up. Alright, man, check this out. We gotta go on the offensive. It's like the rapper Sugar Free said if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Wait. What? What just happened? You mean if I just hold something over my mouth, I don't actually have to memorize the lines, and I can just read them off a script so they can be horribly 80 yard into the movie at a later date? Talk about war on sound editing. Exactly. I say Merry Christmas at work no more. I have to say Happy Holidays, but I am not in the days. Yet another one of these Christian movies that claims that the man is trying to take Christmas away from them. <clears throat> Deeper than that, though, you heard about Area 51? What about Area 52? Area 51? What? I'm saying, that's kind of cause of these ass burgers. Speaking mm. of burgers, you probably ain't even had one in years. <laughs> um, now we're referencing the Midnight Screenings review of Glee 3D? Who is in this? I think not. I saw this change. I know what's up. Whoa. Is this turning into self-parody? You're comparing conspiracy theorists to the war on Christmas? I mean, I can't say I disagree, but... Why do you think that? I mean, that's obvious. Look, man, I saw it on Fox News. You know it's true. Turn on Christmas. It's everywhere. Okay, I would expect that sentence to genuinely come out of this movie's mouth, but not ironically like that tone suggests. Is this movie fucking with me? Or a movie who's taking it being edited by somebody with uh, ADHD. Some fan base. Hey, good. Put the cups down so there's no even, more what is the cup? ADR. This he told them to cover it up so no one could read their lips when they talk. 
but you know, but just a way so they again, he says, dump it in later. Scrooge's empty cup of cocoa. Newsflash. Christmas tree. Not in the Bible. Hey, What's with the hip hop? <laughs> I know. I miss him. Yes, I forgot about the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Deuteronomy. Kirk doesn't so much <laughs> have an answer for Christian, but just more questions. That's what they would worship the God with. You were know gods. What gods? Jesus was not born in December. You were celebrating his birthday in December. Hello? When was he born? Okay, I, I get the overall point of, dude, will you just lighten up and have a good time? But could you actually answer him instead of just sounding like a condescending prick? It's all Kirk has. you. <laughs> and stop picturing your sister having sex. <laughs> so where do Christmas trees come <laughs> from? Genesis. Yes, in the beginning, <laughs> God created the heavens, the earth, and tree lots. Makes sense to me. But I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> now, we're not getting ahead of yourself. This would be senseless no matter where you're at in the story. According to the foggy tree lot of purgatory, we hang up Christmas <laughs> trees because there were fruit trees in the Garden of Eden. And God decorated his own house <clears throat> with both fruit and lights. Beautiful green trees decorated with fruit, shimmering with lights inside a house. That's God's idea, not the Druids. Well, that serves me right for thinking that the Druids invented electricity. <laughs> so you're waiting for that gotcha moment. By the way, last I checked, it was God who made the winter solstice when he set the planets on their path around the sun. I, uh, I can't argue with that logic. <laughs> That's like saying that God wrote To Kill a Mockingbird because it was written on paper, and paper came from trees. And the Joseph Smith mentality. Like the yeah. fruit on the tree of knowledge? Now, when you steal something, you're required to put it back. I don't think that's stealing. That's borrowing. Adam Without asking. An apple from the tree. It's okay. This goes. That looks sick. like a horrible apple. I know. What is up with that? Remember that swaddling cloth? Uh. <laughs> of course. What is up with this swaddling cloth? How could I forget the swaddling cloth? So God hangs Christmas trees in His house. Trees are made of wood. Christ was crucified on a wooden cross. Early Christmas trees were decorated with fruit, and God's dog laps up the water from under the tree. So when you walk into a Christmas tree lot, I want you to see hundreds of crosses. Sorry, can't do that. I don't go to tree lots, so it's not gonna happen. Yeah, I like me a good fake tree. Instead of fruit. Oh my god, is that the opposite of what Christmas is about? Why does he just tree? cut out the middleman and hang up giant crosses in his house instead of trees? <laughs> so when you see empty Christmas trees... They're to dance the with the sinners and cry with the saints. Yeah, it's true. See the empty cloths lying in an empty tomb. Perhaps you could even light the crosses on fire! I am not exaggerating. Town, no, I say I have no idea what's going on. I don't think any of us do. Interested in the cross that on the cover, she's not even looking at the cross. She's looking at the Christmas tree. Yeah, she's Probably looking down. Why she just wants her presents. Glad I'm not the only one that's speechless. That's pretty cool. I want what you're smoking. <laughs> I, I didn't see that. I didn't, I, I didn't see either. That's Is this guy kicked in the head, head or something? You completely pulled it out of. This movie the must only make sense to, is about to complain that Starbucks coffee doesn't feature the actual Virgin Mary's breast milk. Or he's just <laughs> gonna complain about Santa. That's the guy. Santa. That's... Obliterated Jesus! Jesus is gone! Have you hit puberty yet? What is with your voice? No one would expect a child to make this argument. S-A-N-T-A. Rearrange the letters. Satan. Yeah, Christians do that from time to time. Right? Right. Coincidence? Yeah, because coincidences totally don't exist in this movie's universe. 
letters, and two words can't possibly have the same letters. That's why, in reality, God is a dog. <laughs> they're stuttering and they're pausing. I think they're just trying to make this movie longer. You better watch out. You better not pout. You better not cry. Please don't sing. Stand up. Wait, he didn't even sing the lyrics right. He knows when you watch Lee Ping. You're stalling, movie. You're stalling to make an 80 minute running time. This is this is a surprise you could get that long. It's a hijacking, high handed, hijacking, handedness, jacking. Are you going off script? Because it sounds like he's making this up as he goes along. And it's not going well. Uh, no, this isn't a Christmas hijacking because John McClane isn't here. Die Hard! <laughs> the superior Christmas movie. Yeah. Or relax, people. Kurt will tell us the true meaning. Is he having an orgasm? I'm looking at him. I see him. Hold on. I see his face. Uh, by the way, Sam is apparently not only big brother, but also terrifying. Why does Uncle Bill look like Kurt Cameron's murder face? The real Santa Claus was a real bad, bad dude. And when I say bad, I mean bad in the good way. So he's Billy Bob Brock <laughs> as Santa. What? Santa. Another Santa. superior Christmas he movie. For a week. By the time this movie got to its real point, beating Christmas into the masses with your fists. And much like Kirk and Christian stalling in the car, this shot just keeps going. Now, if I tried to show you how this really happened, you'd see a lot of guys in robes, wearing tall hats, cracking the knuckles, and swinging incense everywhere. It would be a mess. Santa's gonna fist the motherfucker. <laughs> Santa's story, I know. I want you to imagine this a little more Lord of the Rings. -y. And by Lord of the Rings, I'm surprised Kirk knows Lord of the Rings. Yeah. yeah. Rush at the Hobbit. They both have about the same length and the same budget. <laughs> Kirk tells us the story of Saint Nicholas of Myra, who was part of the First Council of Nicaea and one of the authors of the Nicene Creed, part of which establishes Jesus as the divine Son of God. But there were leaders in the church who began to deny Jesus was the Son of God. And we can all thank St. Nicholas for Jesus being the reason for the season. Because St. Nicholas beat the shit out of enemies of the faith. I believe that's the that guy who covered his mouth earlier. Oh, yeah. Conspiracy theorists. So the movie is equating the war on Christmas with heresy. Even Kirk Cameron wants you to shut up about your coffee cups. The problem here isn't that they don't believe, it's that they don't believe enough. In the beginning, was the word. And that word is pain. He's like, do you believe now? Do you believe now? Oh my god. Bam! There is a certain problem with this. Cat Whisper is supposedly playing Arius, who legend has it was struck by St. Nicholas during this very debate. Only Arius wouldn't have been allowed in the debate proceedings because Arius was not a bishop. But who gives a shit? Let's see Santa beat the fuck out of the guy. <laughs> and it was not the time for this pastor to go soft on truth or stay quiet for the sake of being politically correct. This <laughs> fourth century AD was truly the most politically correct time in our history. <laughs> I blame <laughs> Tumblr. Why is this servant of his? Oh, look who um, it is. Better? Get that idea. This blowjob girl. Even the PG rated Christmas movies I do on here also featured Santa murdering people. What? Why does it look like it's me playing Santa? And it does look like him. Yeah. Let's go bless some kids tonight. We've got gifts to give. <laughs> yeah. Don't go near any kids, you creepy sack of shit. No one is gonna let you in their front door. And let me guess, this blows Christian's mind. Yeah. Is the man? Now let's go. But he killed somebody. No, no, he just beat the piss out of them for not believing enough. And we're only 50 minutes into this. There's still a half hour left. Why? The movie's over. Yeah. Go back in. Say like, Christian got a rash or something. Like I, I got a rash. I, 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 I broke out in something. Like I, like I had like some eggnog. Uh, I had no idea that was a little bit. I was like, oh my god. Oh my god. 
I could not like, like, like a, 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 Oh, that's why. They are definitely ad-libbing. Yeah. Punk suggests that Christian be the one who goes back inside and saves the Christmas spirit of the party. Yeah, that'll liven things up. Tell them about your new fondness for swaddling clothes and heretic beatings. <laughs> or just march inside and act like a madman. Whoa! Looks like somebody's having the money. First things first, you out! <laughs> Park Kirk was born to play. The bad angel who sits atop your shoulder. Why else I'd believe that. What like the fuck is happening? So old, Just watch. It's sliding into the presence that even the N64 kid would tell you to tone it the fuck down. And speaking of the presence, Kirk forgot to tell us about the presence. When you see them from this perspective, imagine the new Jerusalem. He looks more like Reno, Nevada to me. Is yes. he Just for real? Yes, he shit. is. I respect you more, Kirk. This goes on so long. God, that guy. He makes Nosferatu look uh, humble. Yeah. This tree, full of healing leaves. Some would call them needles. This is doing what God does. He has always been giving gifts to his children at the base. Of I would trees. run. I would get the fuck out of that house. The Oaks of Manly. The, so the call for Midsummer would be more inviting to yeah. stay with. No, literally. New Nintendo Wii U? Now Christian has become that annoying Christmas guy that nobody wants to be around. So I'm confused, so he has the Christmas spirit again. Yep. Is sometimes a Why? Because Kirk put it, it in him. But Christian's wife is always walking in slow motion. While he's she in looks motion, disgusted. As she walks as slow as he slides. If this movie ends in divorce, it'll be the most realistic thing in the film. <laughs> Eva got his soldier representing Herod's men wanting to murder all the newborn babies at Kirk's party. Herod's soldiers were experts. All I can think is someone putting their junk in that mouth and then crushing it. Oh. Cracker represents. We need to infuse old symbols with new meaning. New? New? So you're admitting you just made all this shit up? <laughs> we need to tell our children new stories. We need to be bold. So do you not actually believe any of this shit you just told me? I seriously gotta ask. Is Kirk Cameron the greatest troll who ever lived? The man just made a movie linking Christmas traditions to the Bible, and then he said it's all just some new stories he created. So Kirk Cameron is either the craziest man who walked the planet, or he's a comedic genius. I go crazy. Christmas, but what do you get for the man who has two gigantic yeah. refrigerators in his kitchen? These people are clearly rich. I'm yeah. give you something I've been wanting to give you for a while. Holy shit, he's three <laughs> times bigger than she is. He's gonna split her in half. <laughs> what do you got in mind, Big Papa? Ugh. <gasps> Ugh. Their family would be the least awkward thing that just happened. I mean, if you were writing this story right now, what would you want to have happen? Kirk, uh, I'm the wrong person to ask that question to. <laughs> <laughs> Overview. Well, you and I couldn't have come up with something like this. I went ahead and just organized a hip-hop dance crew that encompasses all the joy and gospel burst and excitement that I alone as one man just cannot express. Can't. What? Dance off. No. Yeah. What the fuck am I wearing? <laughs> How is it that a man like Darren Doe, who spent the 90s directing music videos, can be so bad at directing choreographed dance? Dance and it's on as Get ready than this. the so craziest visual you will see. Dance and it's on did better than saving Christmas. Oh, and there's still 20 minutes left of the movie. The rest of it is filled with them getting fined with about a dozen noise complaints. <laughs> and be what? honest, this scene only <laughs> hardly exists so Kirk can show us that he knows how to do the worm. He does! He, he does the worm! Trolling us and look at this! What is going on? The craziest shit on camera. You know, for a but big guy, he's kind of agile. Yeah. I'll give him that. Mm -hmm. is the only oath of loyalty liberals want you to take is full commitment to the LGBTQYSTD lifestyle? Dude! The director. I have uh. no problem forcing it. Okay, Chief. 
I just think gay people deserve equal rights and should be allowed to get married. You made a movie where a guy nearly beat a man to death because he didn't believe enough. And his wife still looks like uh, she wants that divorce. Yeah. No, it's the voice of the angels. I don't know if they sound mean, but they are the ugliest screen couple I've ever seen. I know. He's definitely a closeted gay guy. Or he's high. Or both. Yeah. Well, let's leave Uncle Bill here. He pissed himself with a Or he frequently had well, takes well, cocaine. Well, I show up for these parties. To witness white people acting crazy? Oh, I concur. Also, who the fuck are you? Good question. Why isn't he invited to the dinner table? Seriously, who Sounds is Sounds like they have enough. Pull out your best dishes, your finest linens, your nicest silverware, the biggest hand. Most of us don't have that. Yeah. Every side dish you can possibly imagine, and the richest butter. God damn it! Gluttony! Greed! What the fuck, Kirk? Good oh, points. This As is Brad put it. This is probably the most pro, pro gluttony yeah. Christian yeah. film yeah. ever made. Mm -hmm. So it's right that our holiday is marked with material things. Okay, Kirk. Did that match up with what you said earlier? Yeah, what? You didn't need to make the most materialistic Christmas movie ever made to talk me into buying you a present. I'm glad Christian is no longer thinking about how many mouths they can feed with this money. That would really ruin their appetite. And why buy two gigantic <laughs> fridges if you can't have a year's worth of leftovers? This is truly representative of the Christian spirit. That and Kirk Cameron winking at us. <laughs> right before he rapes us. Oh, don't go anywhere. There's still ten minutes of the movie what? left. You didn't God think you'd get damn. out of here without seeing Darren Doan acting grumpy in the outtakes or more stalling. We have been here before. My people have been through enough. I think you do. So your people have been through enough too. We all have been through it. Ah, oh, so he really was saying words when the music was playing. Uh. He wasn't saying sentences, but he was saying words. <laughs> and speaking of random words that will stick with you this holiday season. Cameron, Kirk, 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 Cameron, Cameron. Yeah. Cam Cam. That is the whitest rap since MC. I guess he told them it's either this, you do that, or you get the clamps. Clearly. Not surprising to most people, Saving Christmas didn't go over so well with critics and audiences. The movie still has a zero on Rotten Tomatoes and was awarded four Razzies, including Worst Picture. Michael Bay mm. beat out Darren Doan for Worst Director, not because he's a worst director, but because Michael Bay's name spells out Michael Bay. For a while, the movie even wrote the I think they should have given Bay a pass that year. Time on IMDb's bottom 100. I say it's not surprising to most people because it was at least surprising to one person, Kirk Cameron. Cameron would respond to the negative reviews by going on Facebook and urging people to upvote the movie's audience rating because, quote, we decide what we want our families to see. That'll teach those critics mm. for far too long. Imagine having to beg for life. Watch movies. And the hate actually went up. The downvote went up. Work is saving Christmas currently holds a 31% audience score on RT. And just to give a comparison, a Medea Christmas has 7%. <laughs> but Cameron later wrote that off as saying it was just a hate campaign led by haters and atheists. Okay. Well, I do. There's a lot of religious people that don't like Kirk Cameron. Yeah, I bet. He's pretty Number polarizing. One, you asked people to upvote it, and I'm sure you didn't give a shit if they'd seen it or not. And two, the movie really is that bad. It's a really bad movie. Really bad. Really, really bad. Really it's bad. That shit and its insanity that it's worth watching in the same way that maybe you'd spend an extra minute listening to a crazy person on a street corner shouting into a microphone. You're just here for the spectacle. But let's call this movie what it really is. Kirk Cameron and company wanting to ride the way yeah. of these oh. successful religious That's films, disturbing. Like yeah. Filming his own family Christmas party and putting it out in theaters to make an instant profit. Because after all, 
while acting surprised that Kirk Cameron said something crazy is like watching a riff show where two people dress as Mario and Luigi and beat the shit out of a Jesus Santa hybrid and then being surprised when it isn't a proper analytical review of the film. <laughs> He and Doug reviewed Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ a few months before this, where they had like a sketch, series of sketches, where they, yeah, they dressed up as Mario and Luigi, and they whipped this character from the nostalgia critic named Santa Christ. <laughs> Some people didn't take it well. <laughs> pronunciation uh, movie. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't know what to think with this character. You get, uh, you get the feeling this is the type of character who, like, when an old religious woman drinking tea is watching and she goes, well, isn't he a funny little Negro? No, literally, that's exactly what I picture. Yeah, that's how I imagine that demographic would uh, react to this. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. And just to be, just so you know, I have seen this movie in its entirety w oh. without the review. No. And it is quite an experience. Oh. It's like the room. You have to like just see it how bad it is yeah. to believe it. And uh, it made no sense. It just made absolutely no sense. I don't even understand what his point was. Yeah, just Kirk Cameron. He seems like he's. Fucking nuts. Yeah. And Just, he has a wife? Yeah, they've been married, I don't know, since like the 90s. They got Ugh. they got a couple of kids, some of them adopted. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my traditional sense of making edgy jokes, I just have to say, I find it ironic that Kirk is anti-gay marriage and he has said that he thinks homosexuality is unnatural, considering he has the Faggiest personality I have ever seen. Yeah. And I, I will give him this though. Despite all of his uh, anti gayness, he is cute <laughs> in a prison sex slave kind of way. <laughs> Darren Doan, he used to direct Blink 182 videos. I can't even picture that. And now he directs, he's made a couple things with Kirk. Mm -hmm. He directs quite a few of his projects, and as Brad showed with that tweet, the LGBTQYSTD lifestyle, mm -hmm. he's fully in Kirk's uh, peer group. Yeah. Oh, God. And um, that bit at the end with the beatbox, which is the after credit scene mm -hmm. for the movie, it makes me wish your brother was here, because I, I think I remember Nick can't beatbox. Oh my god, can he? So yeah, I, I wish he was here so he could do that and then I could go <laughs> Kirk -ker -ker Cameron. <laughs> that would be so funny. And uh, were, were, were there any jokes that Brad made that stuck out to you? Uh, I made all of them. He was echoing what I was thinking in my head the entire time. Um, but probably all of the swaddling cloth jokes that killed me because I'm like, what is the deal with this fucking swaddling cloth? Yeah. Or how many times are you going to say, oh, and I love hot chocolate, or I love blah, blah, blah. Like, he literally sounded like he wanted to have sex with Christmas. He looked fucking demented with the eyes. Ugh. And uh, my favorite bit, the part that, that is even crazier than all the swaddling cloth shit, is when he says, you see a line of presents? See the new Jerusalem. I'm like... I got nothing. Literally, he is grasping for straws. And the part where the brother, Christian, he just belly slides across the floor. What? I, like, there was no lead up to him, like, changing his Christmas spirit. Like, it made, it made no sense. No sense. What was Kirk's point? And I'm just thinking, if someone, if I was at a party, if I was at, like, your family's party, mm -hmm. And one of our cousins did that. Yeah. And they just came in and roll like, 
It would not be in slow motion, there wouldn't be music. They would just look like they've, I don't know, smoked a blunt and uh, have lost it. Yeah. Like, it would just, uh, it made me feel like, okay, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear it quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, he showed at the beginning those pictures of everybody in the cars. Mm -hmm. Those were from the three midnight screenings reviews that Brad and all of his friends at the time did. Mm -hmm. Because it was, it was so bad, Brad decided to send everybody to the movie. Yeah. And this, no shock, this movie was number one on most of their worst of the year list. Wow. But, Brad says he loved it. In the sense that it's so... so bad. Yeah, just the insanity, like, yeah. you just can't believe what you're watching. Mm -hmm. And... From the video of Brad and Dave, they recommend people go to see it. Dave Gobble, his friend, says, Give this man money! I want to see more of the movies he makes. Oh my god. And uh, the next group was Jake Norville and Brian Irving. And they also recommended it, but unlike Brad and Dave, they don't want to give Kirk Cameron money for it. So they said, if you see this movie, torrent it. <laughs> Just bootleg it, yeah. fuck him over. Seriously. And uh, Jake comments, You ever think that maybe Jesus wasn't the son of God, that he was just a dude that told people to be nice to each other? Yeah. To which Brian Irving goes, Jesus Christ, the world's first hippie. <laughs> Literally. He kind of was. Yeah, or like Jesus Christ, the first bastard child. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Brian Lewis and Sarah Gobble, mm -hmm. when Christian says he's going to give his wife something he's going to want to give her for oh, a long oh, time. Don't even say it! Sarah quipped, anal. Oh <laughs> my god. And, and she's, what did she say? Something about uh, pa Big Papa? Yeah. I wanted to, like, rip my skin off my body. Yeah, just go, <laughs> Literally. And... Brian Lewis, he talked about the war on Christmas part. Mm -hmm. He commented that he once worked at a store and this woman was like, Merry Christmas. And he was like, Happy Holidays. She's like, Merry Christmas. And he goes, Happy Holidays. And then she's like, I'm a Christian. And then he goes, Why aren't you happy I didn't say Happy Hanukkah? <laughs> yeah, three different groups went to see it and they all had, they all admit it's horrible, but they had a blast at it. Mm -hmm. And Brad Jones, this was the, like before this, he had a rule not to review anything before 1995, mm -hmm. but he decided to break it for this and he's now more open to reviewing modern stuff. Yeah. But yeah, Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas, along with God's Not Dead, it just kickstarted the Christian cinema wave that Ugh. is still going eight years later. This movie is eight fucking years old now. Ugh. And this review is seven, which is just nuts. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Brad, I, I liked how he reviewed this thing. I think he did a great job. And he went to a religious school until he graduated high school. Yeah. So he's <laughs> well educated enough that he can point out when they're being hypocritical or they're just going and pulling shit out of their ass. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's all I have to say. I, I love this review. It's a goddamn motherfucking classic. <laughs> and what did you think of it? I think it's classic. I I gotta show people this. This is just hilarious. I. I don't, I almost like, I'm wondering, do I show people the bootleg version of the movie or do I show them this review? Because I kind of think this review does the best job. Start with the review. Yeah. Like, I didn't see the movie till after, but the experience was still all the same. Just a uh, fucking trip, fucking nuts, and it was uh, well worth it. I feel like you gotta get high before you do it. Before oh, you watch it. Or drunk. Or drunk. Either so you one. just, you think you're going out of your mind. Hope everybody's holiday season is off to a good start. Glad you could join me for this. Hell yeah. And uh, we will see you again, hopefully soon.